Okay, so uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually configure some uh, services or some resources um, and then some individual services. And the reason we're going to do it that way, uh, which I'll show you in a second, um, is so that we can work out whether there's one particular resource that's stopping a whole service from falling over. Um, so let's play around with that. Uh, let's do a failover domain first. Let's include those two nodes. Uh, then we're going to do some shared fencing, uh, shared fence device. Now this is a um, a bit of a placebo fence, really. Because um, it doesn't actually really do anything. Um, <coughs> so we're doing a shared fence device, and then we're going to go into each node and then um, configure that shared fence device. So we select the one that we just created. to node 2 and the exact same thing Apart from this time it's going to be node 2 ok now let's do some resources now we're going to have three resources. The first one is going to be an IP, and this is going to be the IP which the file sharing is going to be served up on. Which, if we look at our diagram, you'll see it here. So these are the resources that we're going to be configuring. I've just done IP, and we're going to do GFS and Samba. So the name, I'm just going to call it Sanvol1 mount point now this is is important if you go to the nodes and then do an f disk you can see that it's sdb actually the mount point is san sanvol1 because we've created that and the device was dev sdb it's gfs2 force unmount and then submit and then the last one is Samba name which we're going to have as cluster 1 that will be the net BIOS name of the device so on the client side you'll go like backslash backslash cluster 1 to get to it uh, and we're going to have that as the work group Okay, let's configure some services. And like I said, first the first round while we're troubleshooting it, we're going to configure three separate services just with one resource associated to each. And the reason we're doing that is to check that there isn't one resource that's preventing the uh, whole service from falling over. So this is just one called IP with just the resource of IP associated with it. Uh, then I'm going to do another one. I'm going to call it Sanvol1 automatic, and then we can do this. Add a resource, GFS. Do one more. Okay. So 
So there we go, we've got one, two, three services at the moment. do services a couple of times it refreshes. So that's actually running on node 2 at the moment so let's shift that over to node 1. Uh, and what we should be able to see now is pinging the virtual IP address. So that's the virtual IP address that shifted over to um, node 1. What we can do is, is if we do that then we can shift it over to node 2 and you just hopefully see it drop a couple of packets and then continue. So there you can see it's um, timing out and then time out again and then come back. There we go. So now it's on node two. It says services stop there and it's red telling us it's down. But if we refresh a little bit, you can see there it is. And then shift it back to node one again. And we need to do this with each of the resources so we know that um, everything is okay really. And then once we've done that we can bundle all the resources up into one service. Okay, so IP address is fine. Let's try the GFS. So at the moment it's on node 1. Now let's check that it is on node 1 by doing a DFH. And there it is sitting at the bottom there. And let's shift it over to node 2. Now what it should hopefully be doing now is unmounting it from node 1 and then going over and mounting it on node 2. So let's check. Has it been unmounted yet? There you go. It's been unmounted. Let's see if it's now mounted on node 2. There it is at the bottom. So it's been mounted on node 2. Let's now shift it back again. Interestingly enough there. It's a little bit slow. It's telling us it's on node 1, we've just seen it's on node 2 so there we go, shift it back to node 1 again so let's see if it's unmounted it yet, there you go, it's already unmounted it is it on here yet? there we go, so it happens really quickly ok now Samba, before we get Samba to work uh, we have to do some configuration first um, we have to configure the SMB service exactly the same way you would do if it wasn't in a cluster. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to SSH in to uh, the VM. So I'm going to go onto node 1. If we do IF config ETH2, I think. There we go, 157. So 192.168.0.157. So You don't have to do it this way, you could just type it in the console. Um, just find it easier sometimes to uh, do it through SSH instead. Okay, so we have here the SMB configuration that's going to be used with our cluster. It doesn't use this one, it uses this one. So that's what we need to be editing. So if I vim into smb.conf.cluster1. So cookies already filled in for us, NetBIOS name, cluster one. Interfaces we need to do ourselves. This is the highly available IP address resource that you defined within your cluster configuration. And that's about it. Uh, now we need to do some other global stuff in here. Now some of these things you would hopefully only ever do in a uh, lab environment, especially one of the commands that I'm using is a very bad idea. So this is just to illustrate how it works. These are all fine by the way. <laughs> 